K, the muscle cat, Saxon Huxley. Hey, buddy, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm buddy. Good. How are you? Nice to Bye. see you. Thank, thank you very much for your time to accepting this interview with me. No problem. I, I, I assume we're going to talk a lot about wrestling, so that's good for me. We have to start about the story when I came to UK. I'm sure you remember, remember it in 2017. I I had two things in mind. I thought I, I was going to see you wrestle live because I have never seen you wrestle. And Yushin Thunder Liger as well was wrestling. <laughs> so when you told me the date of the match and I looked into it, it was the exact same day of Yushin Thunder Liger. <laughs> oh, man. And I had to make a choice, but I thought I was going to see my friend wrestle live. Well, I appreciate that because... Uh... You got the best wrestler of all time, and then me. So, what can I say? You picked me, so that's a good friend. <laughs> La, as as we are on the subject of Jushin Thunder Liger, he had just recently retired in January. I know you are a big fan of him. Yes, I'm upset. I mean, he's been going since the mid '80s, so it was going to happen one day, but it's sad because he's so good. It was, it was sad to see him retire, if I'm honest. I wish he would have stuck around. What are the things that you think uh, made Liger stood out? Oh, wow. One of the things for me was always how he could convey through a whole body suit is the body language and emotion he could still exude. And he was fully masked, everything. You couldn't see any of his skin. Yet somehow he could give you the facial emotions and the, the body language. He could suck you in through that, which is really saying something because he, yeah, he was, you couldn't see his face and he still managed to do that. So that was always one thing. The other thing is just how versatile and diverse his whole, his whole career is so different. He's been through so many styles, heavyweight, junior, his tag matches, just so innovative. He's just, most of the things you see now, especially in a independent wrestling and even in NXT and things like a lot of these things, if you go back, there's so much that's influenced by Jushin Thunder Liger. Definitely amazing. He's influenced character. so much. Uh, man, I know in this crazy situation like the coronavirus, I know like beside working out, you, you must be reading a lot of books right now. Yeah, that's reading books is one of the things that's keeping me insane. I, I'm going insane anywhere, but <laughs> the, the the short amount of time that I'm able to keep my grip on reality is spent reading. So that's tell us about your level time. of reading. That's really fascinating. Like, when did it start? What's that reading? Yeah, your love for reading, uh, reading. it's really fascinating. Oh. Well, it started as a, as a kid, as a young one. I definitely fell out of it when I was, I don't know, being a teenager and stuff, but definitely over the last 10 years, especially since I've been wrestling it, it's a nice thing to come back to outside of the ring. Uh, I just like to read. It's thirst for knowledge this time. It's all I can say is I'm always interested in new things. Right. I know Daniel Bryan is big, uh, like he's a big reader as well. Do you think, like yeah. a wrestler, when he reads a lot, is there a way to link it to pro wrestling? What does it uh, develop into a wrestler? Maybe like into characters or promos? Do you think it has an effect on pro wrestlers? I think so. I think if you look for, if you're looking for creative content to try and implement if you say if, if you haven't found your character or if you, things for promos there's nothing better than a, a books especially the classics philosophy books there's so much so much out there you can find right I, i've got no no books filled with quotes and I'm, I'm assuming a lot of these other wrestlers do i'm just constantly scribbling stuff down if i see something cool I, hi it's brock can you hear me, my friend? Uh, you are back. It stopped for a while. Oh, did it? Oh, yeah, no, When no, did it cut off? No, no, it's fine. Just for a few seconds. 
Uh, regarding reading, you added that to your character in the ring. Sometimes I see you coming to the ring with a book. Yeah, sometimes. I, I've always got one on me, so I thought, why not bring one to the ring? But if I That's... read something that excites me, maybe I can, it can give me a little motivation. But right. we'll see. I'd like to hit someone around the head with it soon. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, just uh, tell, tell us about the muscle cat character. Uh, because uh, are you with me, my friend? Yes. It, it so breaks. Still cat. on? Yeah, it cuts off. Maybe with the internet connection, we are fine. Tell us about the muscle cat character. I I can sense like a sense of uh, mystery about it, like in a unique uh, in a unique way. Everybody like. You know, when they first saw you on the NXT UK tournament, you had the Jesus uh, thing going on. But you didn't use that, no. It's because of this. <laughs> I, I, I get, if I walk down the street, I get called Jesus. So that's, that's not new to me. But um, uh, I, think, I think the world's pretty insane. So that's where I am right now in wrestling. So I, I'm, as soon as you... I think if you go back and watch the recent NXT UK, where there was a battle royal for the NXT number one contendership, I've heard I, about I've that. I've got a new, I've got a new lease of life. I, I'm, I'm going crazy right now. I'm, the way the world is right now, it's sending me a little crazy. So, I think it's having an effect on what I'm doing. So I'm coming out to, I'm coming out to tear people apart right now. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> That's all I want to do. How about your ring style? I really love it because I feel it's different. Like, when, whenever I see you, the way you move, it's an, or, an orthodox, but it's in a really solid, unique way. Tell us about that. Is it your training? Yeah, I think some of it's my training. Uh, my first trainer is Lance Storm. Then I went to find Kendrick. Brian Kendrick, and then I've spent a lot of time with Marty Jones here in the UK. So uh, a lot of different styles, a lot of different trainers, and now the Performance Center in the UK. But um, yeah, I've, I've learned so much technical wrestling in my career that right. I'm at the point where I just want to boot people in the face. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So I. I'm gonna let every everyone else can do all these fancy English moves. I'm just gonna boot people. That's awesome. Yeah, one of my favorite moves of you, like the you added a twist to the Luther's press. Yeah. Like my what first, was the inspiration? Or did you did you just add a twist to it, or was it inspired it by someone? It just happened one time. Someone was coming at me, and I, I was on the floor. I just leapt up like a wild animal. Right. And I just, I just, I just squished them, and I'm, it just felt good. Ever since then, I, I, I want to use it all the time. So it's a, it's a move that I like to, to use every, every time I can. Every match, I'm trying to come at you with that Luthers press, the leap it, of faith. It looked awesome. I think your wrestling philosophy. Now you are talking about it like. Uh, like you present the wrestling whenever you feel something in the ring naturally, spontaneously. It reminds me of Terry Funk a bit, a bit. When he wrestles, you can feel like he wrestles with his emotion, with his body. Whatever comes into his mind, he does it. Uh, Terry Funk, maybe the best of all time, if you ask I me. I really love him. There's not many people better than Terry Funk, so I watch. Terry Funk a lot. He's definitely an influence on me. Yeah, I, I like to be. I, I like to. I like that style Terry Funk had. I like the the unorthodox guys a lot. That that's who I'm drawn to. So they're very unpredictable. Right. So if I'm in if I'm in a ring with an opponent, and I'm become predictable, then he's just gonna be able to counter everything I do with these. So. I want to. I, I like to come at people from different angles and just throw my limbs. Like I'm, like I'm in a fight. I'm always in a fight in my mind and in, in the real world. That's how I look at it. So I got these big long legs and big long arms, and 
they have to come in useful for something. So I'm coming swinging. That's, One that's... time it's going to hit. Right. Uh, who are some of your favorite NXT UK wrestlers to wrestle at the moment? One of my favorite wrestlers who I've been in the ring with is Ilya Dragunov because he's so intense that he, he, he puts up such a good fight and brings the fight that I, I like that level of competition. You guys had a, a, a very nice little match right recently in NXT UK. Yeah, we did wrestle at the end of last year months back yeah that was one it was really tough he, he's very intense he comes at you he, he's scratching and clawing and he he will not stop until one of you is the, dead so i need i need three <laughs> you gotta I bring need, everything i need three matches for you that had not yet has happened yeah the, the first one that sticks out for me well i don't know if you've been watching the show but Brian Kendrick just showed up a few weeks ago. He oh, wrestled he a few matches. He did. He wrestled some cruiserweight qualifying matches. Right. Um, I think it was to go into the, the World's Collide, I believe. So he's been on the show now, and I'm on the show. So I would, he's, my, he's my trainer. Right. I would like to have that match. I would love to have that match. Didn't you guys wrestle before an attack match or something, or you have never stepped in the ring with him? Yeah, we have wrestled. Uh, be- we wrestled once years years ago when I first started training, and then we did wrestle inside WWE in a tag match. It was a dark match at Norwich a few years back, just after the tournament back in Blackpool. Uh, it wasn't televised. It was a dark match when there was a tag. So I've never had that singles match in a WWE ring. That's something I would like. Definitely would like that. But there's so many guys who I'd love to love to get in the ring with that I haven't wrestled yet on our show. The Gallus boys, they're always up for a scrap. Right. I, I remember, just tell us about the start of your wrestling journey. I remember, like we were talking before you was thinking about getting into wrestling. I think you've been to WrestleMania in Florida, right? And if I remember yeah. correctly, after it, like after a while, you decided to get into wrestling. Was it something that, like, when, what was the moment when you said, I want to do this? It was, uh, I've always been obsessed with wrestling since I was a kid. But it was once, I was at university and I was just weight training. I was watching wrestling and lifting weights. And I just had this, I just thought, I need to find a school to wrestle. I need to try it. I couldn't, it was just in my mind and I couldn't let it go. I just, I have to try it because I, I was no longer just a skinny kid. I started to, I was like, hold on, I'm six, I'm six, I'm six foot three, six foot four. I want to try this. So that, that was it. It just, I it was just something I had in my head. I couldn't let it go. And I just, I was became obsessed right. with trying to figure out where I should go. Because now there's a lot of wrestling schools. There's so many schools now. But 2008, 2009, there wasn't as many. There wasn't really many places in the UK to go. Right. So uh, I saw Lance Storm opened up his school. Like he, he'd started up his school. But I saw those spots open. And I had just finished university. And I thought, that's where I want to go. I thought, I want to start there. The re- one of the biggest reasons was Calgary, obviously. All my wrestling heroes were in Calgary. But the biggest thing was Lance's training is five days a week for three months. So, and it's in a new country. So to me, it was like a, it was like a boot camp. Like I, I, you got to get stuck in. A lot of training schools, it's once a week. That's not enough for me. I think like, one day of rest and then you rest for five days. I, I wanted to be in the ring every single day. And I could, for three months... I thought that's the best way to learn. Just jump, jump in the deep end. When you first, like, in your, in your first wrestling uh, sessions, like getting in the ring, how did you feel? Did you feel this is easy? I can do it oh. easily? No, I, I found it. I, I, I never took to it as easy as some people. I, I was the guy in the class that a few people were flying ahead of me. I had to... 
it's never came too easy to me. I've had to work hard for it. Some guy, there's some people who just take to it naturally. Whereas I had to keep working and working and working. I was really awkward at first with some of the bumps and stuff. It was quite hard, but right. it's just repetition. Rest in school is just you do the rolls, you do the bumps. Yeah, right. I know. I know. You stick are, in, work hard. You love traveling around the the world. Just tell us about living in Calgary. Did you did you like it there? Oh yeah, I love the place. I could have lived. I could live there one day, maybe. We'll see. It was a beautiful city. Yeah, I like it. The winters were very, very cold. I used to walk to the gym, and my hair was so cold I could have snapped it off. It was like ice. It was really good. I like that city. Really nice. I know one of your uh, favorite uh, wrestling territories is Stampede Wrestling. Tell us about your love for this territory. Stampede Wrestling? Oh, wow. I don't know where to start. Uh, well, growing up, I was a big Bret Hart fan, Owen Hart, Bulldog. Right. So as soon as I found once on the internet, I was just looking up all this stuff. This, this is where everyone started. Jushin Ligas came through there. Right. Uh, Hiroshi Hase. So many guys came through Calgary. Brian Pillman. Uh, even before Harley Race would show up there. Right. Nick Bockwinkle would show I'm just like, this is just great. All the footage, it's so gritty. It's, it's just such... There's some real raw emotion about Stampede Wrestling. Definitely. It was, it was, just, it was just like... It's just great. Uh, all that old footage is beautiful. I love it. It's yeah. just got something real about it. I wish it, uh, most of it uh, weren't edited though. We only got some few minutes of it, but uh, yeah, maybe that was Stu, more. Yeah. I think Stu used to just tape over all his reels. He wouldn't. That's right. Stampede, so he, that's why every match is clipped because that they cool. use the same reels. But Maybe we need to ask. Maybe we can ask Tyson Kidd. He, he'll know. <laughs> Actually, when I was talking to Tyson Kidd, he told me some of the footage on full it exists with the, with the Bruce, like Bruce or something. But yeah. I think it's the late 80s stuff. Uh, uh, going back to your training, uh, I was talking to one of your trainers, the, legend, the legendary Marty Jones. And he mentioned you, he said, you know, there is something about the muscle cat. He didn't just want to go to one school. He wanted to go and learn, like, around the world in different schools. Uh, obviously, you went to Marty. Tell us about your experience training with Marty. Yeah, well, just to touch on your point about I wanted to train different places, I, I always felt like I, I wanted to go to different people to take something from each school. So that's what I, I've always had that. I, I, you see the guys, even all my favorite wrestlers, they travel around the world. They go to that's Japan, right. Canada, America. I always had that travel, uh, sense of travel spirit in me. So I always like to go around looking for different schools and trainers. That's, that's why I, I, I've been trained by a few different people. So... Yeah, Marty Jones. I started training with Marty 2015, I believe. So maybe just a little less than five years ago. Uh, he was doing. He wasn't doing full time schools. He would just show up at different schools doing seminars with Johnny Sand. Uh, usually over a weekend, so you, you'd see it advertised like a like a weekend seminar. And I went to one, and I was just like, "This is just great." I was just like, "I'm so happy these." these guys are willing to teach me their knowledge because it's just incredible. It was, it was something I'd, I'd watched the world of sport style, yeah. but I'd never really practiced it because before then I, I trained with Lance, with Brian. I'd right. never really trained in that British style. And that's thankfully, thankfully I stuck at that because now with NXT UK, we have the British brand and it's very influenced by the old world of sport style. So every one of us, in NXT UK, has watched a lot of Marty Johns. We've lo watched a lot of Johnny Stan. So it's it's a brilliant style of wrestling. Like, what are the things or the attributes you like you've learned from Marty? On a let's say 
Endering or like on a personal or uh, life lessons. What did you take from well, Marty's school? Well, Marty's got a, he's been, he, he's had a long career. He was in Japan back in the, I want to say maybe the 70s. He was in Stampede. Right. Marty's got a lot of life lessons. He's got some good tales and stories. So, But uh, I'd say in the ring, well, it, Marty was trained in the, he was trained by Billy Robinson back in the day. If you look on, there's a, there's a really cool clip. But, uh, it's been floating around the internet before, but it's, I think it's Billy Robinson training a bunch of young kids. And Marty's one of the kids, if you look closely. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I Marty, when he was young. So Marty's got a big amateur background and stuff. So he's, I'd say the biggest thing I learned with Marty was just that British style, the, it's just the British that that old school British style that really helps round out your, the like your game. So right, it's a really good foundation and fundamentals to to have. How how about uh, Brian Kendrick? Obviously, another one of your trainers. Tell us about uh, yeah. the experience going to the USA and training with him. Brian was. Uh, Brian was an incredible trainer. Again, he's been to Japan mm. so many times. He's been in WWE for years. If everyone's everyone knows where he's been and done, he's he's uh, to me. Brian's one of like a, he's very underrated as one of the most innovative guys. He was doing right. things back in the early two thousands that the high flyers now maybe they don't realize they're influenced by Kendrick, but right. he was one of the biggest innovators of the cruiserweight style to me. And um, yeah, we, I became friends with Brian when sorry we trained. Cut, and, like on the sorry oh, to, okay. cut you, to cut you off, do you think uh, Brian' philosophy in wrestling has changed? Like he started to step away from that style. Yeah. Recently, well, I think he's smart. He's he's he is the man with the plan, right? Because he's he's a bit older and wiser than he was before. So I think he definitely had to switch it up. Uh, I think he's I think he's craftier now. He's definitely a lot more he's sneakier and he's craftier. He's he's like a true veteran now, you know. Right. It's more about more grappling, more of a headlock. I think I've listened to one of his interviews and he said like now he wants to present everything like it is real. He doesn't want to have those flashy stuff. I think his philosophy has changed a bit from like, the, as you said, the early 2000 to, to now. Yeah, he, I think he's a lot more aggressive now. Right. You, know? you told me once, it, like, he loves, he loves wrestling so much, especially after that an incredible match he had with Ibushi in the Cruiserweight yeah. uh, tournament. Tell us about that match. Well, I think if you want to see Brian's passion for wrestling, all you've got to do is go back and watch the Cruiserweight Classic. And uh, in the build-up video, if you watch that build-up video to it, he's talking about what it means to him. He's he's teasing his eyes, and you listen to the words that he says. That you believe Brian Kendrick loves professional wrestling when he when you go back and watch that that match again. The, the Ibushi match is proof of how good he is. Brilliant! It's a brilliant match. And uh, when did you start working like? Was it in the UK or in the States? My first match was back here in the UK after Lancer's school. But uh, it was it, like any anybody after they finish a wrestling school, it, it's hard to just instantly get booked everywhere. You've right. got to work hard those first few months to try and get the foot in the door. Because I was just the guy saying, oh, I, I trained with Lance Storm, can I be on your show? And a lot of promoters, they want you to come to their school first before they give you a chance. So it's like yeah. anything, you've got, to keep, you've got to keep knocking on the door, be persistent, and eventually something will happen, I believe, if you work hard. So, yeah, back in the UK, I was wrestling for a little while. But then again, took off to go on train with Brian. Just and you did to get away. What were like? What were your? You think your selling points like Saxon Huxley? What is it about him that the promoters wanted him in the car? Is it obviously you have a great look, you have like the height, the body. 
Is it your working ethics or as you said, where did you come? You came training from Lance Storm and Mark T. Jones and uh, Brian Kendricks. Yeah, yeah. Well, being, being bigger helps for sure, man, especially in the UK at this right. time. Uh, do, do you mean back in the, when I first started? Or yes. You, uh, I, didn't, I didn't look like Jesus when I first started. Yeah. I was, so I don't know. It, it just, just some attitude. We work hard. You, the things you can do in the ring, you know. You just got to be persistent, like I say. Uh, I'm from the northeast of England, and the what? There's still now. There's not too. There's a there's a couple of good places up here. Uh, I don't live in the northeast anymore, but that's where I started originally. So I think I I think the promoters there. There was a there wasn't too many wrestlers up here, so the promotions that were up here, they were looking for guys. They were looking for new people to work. So I think that's what it was. And then what? Sometimes you you get lucky. Uh, you have a match on a show, and just so happens there's a promoter sat in the crowd. He sees it after the show. He comes up to you. Hey, I own a promotion. Do you want to come and wrestle for me too? There's there's a lot of that happening. So that's how it works. Uh, as we were speaking, you had that great look. I want to ask you something. Like there are a saying in wrestling, they would say he doesn't look like a wrestler. Do you think? A wrestler has to have a certain type of stigma, a certain type of of body or a look, or we can have all kind of uh, different. Uh, uh, I miss the midgets. I miss the big fat guys. I miss. <laughs> I, I I'm a big fan of the. You know, I'm a big fan of the territories when the Kamala would walk out. There's one man gang. Right. And then, and then you got then you got a uh, there's the midget match, then the King Kong Bundy match, then. Right. Then the the wrestling match, the dynamite kid match. I like the it's like a circus. I'm a big fan of that uh, like carnival style. So I, I like the wide variety of different looks. I don't think there's one look. I think it all depends on the individual. What you you are maybe you, you might be five foot one, but right have the best look in the world. Maybe you're seven foot ten. Who knows? But I think it, as long as you want to fight. As long as you, as long as you believe it in your eyes and look like you, as long as we believe that you believe it. But I think when it comes to being in the face of the company, usually they go with, you know, like guys like who looks like you, great body, great look. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll see one day. I Maybe hope. I'll get my video game cover one day. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it will happen. Uh, when was uh, your first WWE tryout? Was it the UK tournament or was it prior to that? No, it, it was uh, just over a year prior to that, 2015. 2015. Yeah, UK tournament was January 2017. I had a tryout in 2015. That was my first. That was my first tryout with WWE. And then how did you get contacted for that? I think there is a cool story where you wasn't going to be originally in the tournament, but you ended actually in the tournament. No. Yeah, I wasn't originally in. And then I got a call very... It was, there wasn't much time left before the tournament actually took place. I think it was very soon. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, it wasn't. Right before the tournament happened, I, I think I got a call and then... Uh, there was a spot opened up, so I drove to Blackpool, and yeah, I think I found out I was in it through the website, and then I got a call. So something, so, so yeah, it was very quick. It was a, it was a big surprise to me at the time. And yeah. it was. I remember watching the first round match live, and it obviously like uh, seeing you on the WWE Network was something surreal, and. The crowd yeah. suddenly yeah. went nuts, like the way everybody was chanting and into the mess. What was your feeling like? Were you surprised uh, by the crowd? Were you taken off? Yeah, by it? yeah, it was surprise. I mean, I get, I got called Jesus pretty much. Like I said, most days I walk down the street, I get called Jesus. But to have a whole building of 3,000 people shouted. That it was quite surprising to me. I'd never experienced that before. That was pretty cool. It was great. 
it, it was it was one of the one of my favorite uh, moments in wrestling that that tournament the weekend uh, it was fantastic really good uh, I think it wasn't uh, taped, but the next night you even g- uh, got a greater ovation, right? Tell us about yeah. it. Yeah, they need to bring that out. Maybe on Hidden Gems one day they'll put that yeah, out. Yeah, hopefully. Because that was, I think the second day, if I remember, there was, it was even crazier than the first. Mm. There was even more different chants. It was crazy. Yeah, the second, it was a tag match, yeah. but They were going crazy, man. A lot, of, a lot of different variations of the Ch- Jesus chant. That's, but why you didn't I like didn't stuff I've never heard before? Why you didn't like uh, grab the Jesus? Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's politically hard. I want or... I wanted to. Right. You, would, you know you know religion and TV and yes. stuff. You got to be very... careful. But I think it would give you. Uh, like it gave you a path to explore more deep into your character. To be honest, yeah. I prefer like your current, your current character like this. As we were speaking, the mysterious philosopher. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, philosopher that's gone insane. I feel like so. That feels like more. Yeah, I feel like since the tournament was like a few years ago now, three years ago. So, I definitely feel a lot more me. I feel a lot more me now. Uh, do you feel like uh, do you like working as a heel or a baby face? Where do you see yourself? It, it doesn't. That doesn't matter to me. I like the. I just like the level of competition. Right. Is it like? Uh, uh, just tell us, like obviously, uh, working a heel against working a baby face. Do you have to twist? Little bit of your style, of your ring psychology. Is it easier or harder? I feel like my style. I felt now. I don't need. I'm just out to win. I right. don't feel like I, I. I don't feel like I need to adapt my style. Whether I'm whoever I'm working, I. I think my. I think this. My style can work either way. I think I'm just coming out to win with my style. And how about I think you you work both like as a tag team wrestler and as a single wrestler. How about what do you prefer, or is it you can do whatever? Yeah, I I love both. I love tag wrestling, but I haven't got a partner at the minute. I've had tag partners in the past, but right now I'm on my own right now, so I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying it. I wanna I wanna keep getting more competition singles wrestling right now. Right. Who knows? Maybe maybe I'll find a partner in the future, but do you maybe think, someone who's as crazy as me. Oh, do you think, like, as you said, uh, someone crazy as me, like, do, like, do... Inside tech the head. <laughs> I said that wrong. Do tech teams need to look alike or, like, wear the same attire, have, a, like, a double tech team moves or... This is, let's say, the Amer- the WWF, WWE style, or as we can see in Japan, it doesn't have to be like this, like Stan Hansen and Terry Gordy, like Mizawa and uh, Kobashi. What do you think about it? Yeah, some of those guys didn't have the same gear, right? But they had, I guess Hansen and, and Gordy and them boys, they had similar trunks, like black, just black trunks, black boots, right. just badass. I, I like the tag teams that I don't think they need to look similar. Look at the uh, Breton, the Anvil didn't look the same, right? But right. they had some color coordination going on. I, I like that. I do like guys. I do like even if it's just a pair of boots that are similar or a little something on the trunks. Right. I, I do like that. Uh, Double team moves are always good. Uh, tag tag team wrestling, obviously, you know, it's an art in itself. It's there's nothing better than some double tag team moves. It's Absolutely. Do you feel like the art of tag? I don't want to seem like an like an old school fan. Like the art of tag team wrestling has gone, but I think in a way it lost its magic in a bit. And we've been hearing it's going to come back. There is a tag team wrestling revolution. I don't think we've got it like since the early nineties, honestly. 
I think that the tag teams are there in the world. I, I just think maybe maybe it's the they haven't had the chance on the platforms, maybe. Right. Because I think the tag teams are definitely there. I've been in the ring with a lot of teams that I, I think are fantastic. And I just look at some of the top teams right now. I, I think that I think the teams are there. I see what you. I can understand because if you look back, like back to the eighties, there was right. tag team wrestling was huge. It was just. It was very prevalent on every show, but I, I think I think p- perhaps it's just the platform and they're just waiting to get the right exposure for tag team wrestling. But yeah, right. I'm a big Obviously. fan of tag team wrestling, so I, more tag team wrestling for me would be nice. I would like to watch more. Obviously, I'm 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 going always to add some classic a uh, question like yeah. uh, regarding your talk about tag wrestling. Yeah, tag wrestling. Who would you say your top three favorite tag teams? Favorite tag teams? Right. Of all uh, time. Boy. Hanson and... Uh, let me, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. Probably right. Steve Williams and Gordy. Right. Yeah. Miracle Violence Connection. Heart Foundation, maybe. Yeah, half a half foundation probably, just because of the I I grew up on those guys. Right. Uh, oh, the I, Steiner brothers, man. The Steiner Ste- brothers, you just watching the Steiner brothers murder people is just fantastic. And then I was watching last week the Steiner brothers against uh, Terry Gordy and Steve Williams in WCW. Right. You seen the you seen the matches? I've seen it uh, uh, quite uh, a while back, but not recently. How did you? It's good. Yeah, really good stuff. Some uh, definitely some of the best matches I've seen in WCW tag matches. They have there's wow. two, there's one at the Clash, and I think there's one, maybe Beach uh, Beach Blast right. maybe. If I remember, there's like yeah, two a Clash and then right. a pay-per-view. I'd say I'd say my. Top two are like the Midnight Express for sure and the Rock and Roll Express. I just yeah. love them, I, especially the Midnight. Original Midnight Express. For, even later, man. Stan Lane was good, right? Yes. Which version did you like better, the first one or the Stan uh, Lane? I'd, pr- I'd probably go with the original Condry, right? Right. Uh, is that, I, I bought a DVD. I think you actually maybe sent me this DVD, but the Jim yes. Cornette DVD, right? Right. It's yeah, amazing. With all those, there's all those unreleased the matches. The house shows yeah. matches, definitely, house yes. Stuff. So there's a lot of Midnight Express on there that's just incredible. Fantastic right. stuff. Right. As we, are in the, as we are in the subject uh, of uh, like wrestling in the 80s, I had the feeling... When I watch like wrestling in the 80s, I th- especially right now we like we have a lot of hot fans and people going crazy. But back in the 80s, for some reason, it felt like they are more passionate. I'm not sure if they uh, still kayfabe is going on. Like they felt this is real. Uh, right now, okay, we have great hot crowds, but. It feels like we are playing part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you mean. I think technology, especially the mobile phone, has kind of taken people out of live events in general, whether it's music right. concerts and stuff. I think that's the sign of the times. I think people still care in it. I, well, we could get on. Maybe they might set me off on a big philosophical point, but. I think mobile phones, people are starting to, they, they want to, some crowds, they like to be part of the show. Right. Rather than sitting watching the show. So people love being on their phones. I, I think we're a slave to technology sometimes. So maybe that's right. got something to do with it. Maybe maybe that's got something to do with it. But uh, obviously back in the 80s, before the internet, before computers. So right. There, there was less distractions, I think. Now ever we we can just fiddle around on our phones. We can do. The, the, I think the distraction element is is there now. But definitely, it's good. We still get crazy crowds, so I can't. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 but I see your point. I see your point. I think that's just a sign of the times. Sign of 
All right. where we're at in society with technology. Going into the matches when you are in the car, do you like do you like feel the crowd watch your previous the previous matches before going in, or you just had a strategy on head and going at it? Like uh, I like what? I like to watch every match before me. I like to watch right. the previous matches. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a it's a diff, depends where you are. Different crowds, different promotions. Right. But uh, yeah, I like to watch. I like to see what's happening. And is it like? Did you have previous occasions where the the crowd even they wanted to get? You know. They are not into the match. Like, did you have these experiences? What would you do in such Some like... Sometimes you have to work. You have to work right. harder. Yeah, you, you got to stick with it. You got to you got to keep whooping some ass and then just right. keep working. You know, keep resting. The, That's all I, I can say. Really, you you got to keep at it. I you remember. Know? Yeah, I remember. About, I'm, we're trying to win. I'm, I'm trying to win. If a crowd's not making much noise, right. I'm still trying to win regardless. So, I remember like you was involved in some when I when I used to watch your uh, matches. You had a lot of shows where a lot of kids maybe they were in schools and uh, a lot of uh, family friendly shows. How? What Holiday are you? Camp. Yeah. How how are those like? Did you have fun watching? Did did you have to change your style a bit? Uh, from, uh, the holiday camps in the UK, which is what you're referring to, it's uh, right. That's one of the luxuries we have over here in the UK. Is there's a lot of it, it's one of the best places. Into everyone, every British wrestler will tell you it's the best way to learn in this country. You get your reps in. You can get if you work the holiday camps for a whole year. Just just in one year, you can have a, like a few hundred matches under your belt, and you're working in front of predominantly crowds that have never really seen much wrestling before. Right. A lot of uh, kids who are off off school. So there's just families, kid making noise. The, the dad yeah. sat there with their arms crossed. So it's it's <laughs> one of the best ways to learn this business everyone yeah. even some of the biggest stars like daniel bryan always whenever i hear an interview he does he loved it over here working for brian dixon the all-star wrestling right. a lot of guys came over here it's it's really fun it's really good and it, it's especially for like my when i was wrestling for the holiday camps it was i was quite new into the business so it was really helpful to me uh on and the ending notes just tell us for the muscle cat Saxon Huxley, first of all, what is what are your short term goals in wrestling, and what are your ling long term dreams or goals in wrestling? Tell us about the short term goals right now on NXT UK. I I want NXT UK to keep growing. I want NXT UK to be big. I want it to. We, we've just gone on BT Sport and Paramount Network, so we're on TV in the UK now. And that's a really good sign. This, I think it was the start of, in January. We, we came on TV here. So my one of the biggest goals in my career is to be part of NXT UK's growth. I love the, I really love this brand and I really think it could be, I think it could do really well. I think it is. And I think, I think it is right now. I think it's only going to keep growing. And that's the plan. That's, that's what I would like to do to help NXT UK grow. How about the long-term goal? Do you want to get, obviously, to work in some of the, like, NXT US or? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would like, I want to keep going higher. I want to keep climbing the ladder. That's my long-term goal is climb the ladder in wrestling. That's for sure. Every, every, oh. I'm never comfortable at the same position. I mean, I'm always wanting to, in every aspect of my life, I'm always trying to, Trying to get somewhere else, trying to get higher. So that's all I that's all I want. That's all I can say right now for that. But I want to keep I want to keep climbing that ladder. That's what I love about you, man. You never give up. You always keep going, whatever challenges or obstacles you have in front of you. But you keep fighting and keeps me alive. 
All it right. keeps us alive, I think. We have, that's the part of being alive. We have to keep pushing, to keep, uh, keep setting those goals, keep pushing for it. That's awesome, my friend. Hey, it's been really a great uh, interview. I enjoyed it a lot because I some of the interviews I don't have to prepare for it because I've already like followed your career and we are like some good friends. So it's like calling yeah. a match and during it's it's been huh. easy. It's like it's a perfect and very tough. <laughs> yeah, but for sure. It's good. I enjoy, yeah. I, I enjoy talking to you about wrestling. It's good. Awesome, yeah. man. We, I know I, we. You know, we, we could talk all day about matches and different workers and different styles and stuff. Right. But in this interview, I wanted to get, like, the story of Saxon Huxley uh, for the viewers. And I think it's really interesting. I was yeah, going... Maybe there's the, something there. Right. I was going to do it like I had a plan to come to the UK. But as you said... Uh, Regarding the situation, coronavirus, we'll have another face-to-face -face interview hopefully soon. I hope so. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you, man. Take care. Keep oh, killing thank it. Thank you, buddy. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. I'll bye speak bye. to you soon. Bye-bye.